At this workplace, valve stems are screwed into the body of the valve. The valve stem is placed in position. It is screwed in tight by means of an electric screwdriver. So that the connection can be tested for leaks, soap suds are brushed onto the valve and compressed air is fed in. If soap bubbles appear, there is a leak in the valve, a reject. If no bubbles can be seen, the valve is all right. Basically, the work here on the valve consists of four operations. They are always the same. The checking depends on the attentiveness and the concentration of the operator. And these are subject to variations, inevitably. This machine does the same job, automatically. It doesn't get tired and it always works with full concentration. The only thing that is done by hand is the positioning of the valve stems. The operations screwing and checking are divided up into a large number of separate steps. Let's have a brief look at the most important of them. The valve is conveyed to the machine. A gripper places it on the conveyor, which takes it to the screwdriver unit. The screwdriver screws the valve stem in tight. Conveyance to the next position. It is checked for correct functioning. Conveyance to the next position. It is tested for leaks. It is moved on and placed on the conveyor belt, rejects for good quality. Now, if you have a closer look at the work steps, you will discover that, to varying degrees, they are further subdivided. For instance, at the screwdriver unit. Lower screwing cylinder. Screw up. Raise screwing cylinder. Conveyance to the next position. These separate steps are dependent on one another. This means that the next step can only be carried out if the previous one has been completed. And then there's another point. Naturally, a valve must be available before the screwing process can be carried out. So the interplay of all these factors must be coordinated. And that is done with a programmable logic controller. How this is done, you can see from the following example. At the end of the conveyor belt, a proximity switch determines whether there is a valve present or not. If there is one, it gives a voltage signal to the terminal. This voltage signal is passed on via the terminal to the input module. The input module converts this electrical signal in such a way that it can be processed by the central control unit, which is a small computer. In the central control unit, it is processed in accordance with a program stored in the memory so as to produce an output signal which is routed to the output module. There it is converted and passed on via a terminal to an actuator, in this case a solenoid valve. This operates, thus causing the gripper to pick up the valve off the conveyor belt. By the way, light-emitting diodes on the sensors indicate optically which signal is sent to the input module. If the diode lights up, this means yes, the sensor has operated. If it does not light up, this means no, the sensor has not operated. All the functions that are to be carried out by a machine of this type must be defined at the design stage. This also applies to the control of the machine, of course.
the wiring of the control cabinet and of the machine, i.e. the hardware, must be carried out with great care in accordance with the circuit diagram. Even when the necessary electrical connections have been made between the machine and the control system without any faults, the machine is still not able to work. The control system requires a program according to which it can work. That means it must know how it should react to the various conditions. For this purpose, a function chart is worked out. The entire work sequence is broken down into very small steps. Then the conditions are defined regarding when each step is to be carried out. On the basis of the function chart, the PLC is then programmed, for example with a personal computer. If several machines are to work according to the same program, it only has to be keyed in once. It can be stored and then loaded into the controllers of the other machines. Only now, when all these preparatory phases have been completed, can production begin, automatically, dependably controlled by a programmable logic controller. In this machine, the PLC is accommodated here in the control cabinet. The PLC is made up of the elements in the upper row. It consists of two central control units and seven input-output modules. The sensors, which always report the current state of the entire machine, send appropriate signals to the input modules. These signals are converted in the modules in such a way that they are understood by the central control unit. That means they are converted to a uniform voltage. The central control unit interrogates and then processes these input signals in accordance with a specified program that is stored in the program memory. The result is the output signals, which are once again converted and amplified by the output modules in such a way that they can be understood by the actuators, for example solenoid valves with cylinder, signal lamps, electric motors, etc. The program for the central control unit can be generated on a personal computer or on special programming equipment and loaded direct into the program memory of the CCU. A unit of the same type is also used to test the program and for initial operation. Once production with the machine is underway, it is no longer required. And now, my dear controller, you must do the following. When this proximity switch informs you that a valve is in the waiting position, and when that limit switch signals that the gripper cylinder is in the upper end position, then tell the solenoid valve here that it should operate so that the gripper cylinder can be extended. That is no doubt a very nice way of communicating with a machine controller, but it's the wrong way. The central control unit of the PLC is a small computer, so the instructions, that is the program, must be formulated in a language that it understands we would like to briefly introduce you to the three most commonly used programming languages. Firstly, the statement list. 
The statement list is basically derived from normal language and uses abbreviations of normal words. This statement list, for example, contains load input 3 and input 5, set output 7. That means have a look and see whether there is a signal present at input 3 and at input 5. If there is, then switch on output 7. However, most manufacturers use their own variants of this language. In this Festo statement list, the commands are written out in even greater detail. Here it says, if input 3 and input 5, then set output 7, a language that is easy to understand. Secondly, the ladder diagram. This is a graphic programming language that is derived from the system of electric circuit diagrams with their make contacts, break contacts and coils. It is therefore preferred by users in the field of electrical engineering. Thirdly, the function chart. This is also a graphic programming language that works with logic elements. It is very well suited to the programming of sequence controls. These three programming languages have been specially developed for the programming of controllers. They are all equally good as regards the possibilities they provide. On the machine that screws in valve stems, we would like to pick out one particular work function, namely when a valve is in the working position and the screwdriver is in its upper end position then the solenoid valve should operate so that the screwdriver is lowered. Both conditions must be fulfilled simultaneously if the screwing process is to be carried out. In control technology this is called an AND operation. This process can be represented graphically as follows. Sensor 1 reports there is a valve available. Sensor 2 reports the screwdriver cylinder is in the upper position. The AND circuit is established. If these conditions are fulfilled, the actuator is given the appropriate command. The programming of this work step in accordance with the statement list is done as follows. beginning of the logic operation with the instruction load interrogate input 3 establish an AND circuit with input 5 and interrogate it. When this AND operation has been carried out switch on output 7 with the command set output 7 The Festo variant of the statement list is as follows. Beginning of the logic operation with the command IF Interrogate input 3 Establish an AND circuit with input 5 and interrogate input 5. When the AND operation has been carried out then switch on output 7 with the command then set output 7. In the ladder diagram the same AND operation is as follows. Beginning of the logic operation interrogate input 3 establish an AND circuit with input 5 and interrogate it. When this AND operation has been completed, switch on output 7. And this is the same situation in the function chart, namely beginning of the logic operation, interrogate input 3, establish an AND circuit with input 5 and interrogate it. When the AND operation has been completed, 
Switch on output 7. To represent an OR operation, we shall take a different function. At this point, the valve is tested to see whether it functions properly. Here, a leak test is carried out to see whether the valve is airtight. If test 1 or test 2, or of course both of them, result in a fault, the gripper arm is given the command to place the valve on the rejects conveyor belt. The OR operation can be represented graphically as follows. Sensor 4 reports, valve is OK. Sensor 5 reports, fault. Of course, the fault situation may be the other way round, or there may even be two faults. Then the OR circuit is established. If the conditions are fulfilled, the actuator is given the appropriate command. The programming for this process is as follows on the statement list. Beginning of the logic operation with the command load. Interrogate input 2. Establish an OR circuit with input 6 and interrogated. If the OR condition has been fulfilled, switch on output 3 with the command set output 3. The same program with the Festo statement list is represented as follows. Beginning of the logic operation with the command if interrogate input 2 establish an OR circuit with input 6 and interrogate it. When the OR condition has been fulfilled then switch on output 3 with the command set Output 3. In the ladder diagram, the same function is represented in this way. Beginning of the logic operation. Interrogate input 2. Establish an OR circuit. With input 6. And interrogate it. If the OR condition has been fulfilled, switch on output 3. And this is the same OR operation in the function chart. Beginning of the logic operation. Interrogate input 2. Establish an OR circuit with input 6 and interrogate it. When the OR operation has been fulfilled, switch on output 3. In this area of the machine, there is a NOT operation. If there is no valve in the waiting position at the end of the feed belt, that means if the sensor does not give any signal, then the separator is switched over so that a valve is transported to the waiting position. The graphic representation of the NOT operation is as follows. If the sensor is interrogated and it gives a NOT signal, this establishes the NOT circuit. That means a reversing of the signal. If the conditions are fulfilled, the actuator is given the appropriate command. In the statement list, the program is as follows. Beginning of the logic circuit with the command load.
interrogate whether NOT carries a signal at input 4. If the condition is fulfilled, switch on output 5. In the Festo statement list, this program is represented as follows. Beginning of the logic circuit with the command IF. Interrogate whether NOT carries a signal at input 4. When the condition is fulfilled, then switch on output 5. Now the ladder diagram for the same machine function. Beginning of the logic circuit. Interrogate whether NOT carries a signal at input 4. If the condition is fulfilled, switch on output 5. And finally, the function chart for this NOT operation. Beginning of the logic circuit. Interrogate whether NOT carries a signal at input 4. If the condition is fulfilled, switch on output 5. The central control unit is the intelligent part of a programmable logic controller. It consists of a large number of integrated circuits. The central control unit can carry out logic, comparative and mathematical operations. How many depends on the design and structure of the central control unit. The number of possible operations, the so-called command set, may be over a hundred in a very complex central control unit. Let's have a look at an example of what takes place in a central control unit. This will illustrate its design and the functional sequences. When a valve is in the waiting position and the screwdriver cylinder is in the upper end position, then the solenoid valve should operate so that the screwdriver cylinder is lowered. There is a program that goes with this process. In the statement list, the program is as follows. Load input 3 and input 5, set output 7. This diagram illustrates the sequences in the CCU. The address counter calls up the instruction in the first line from the program memory. In this case, load input 3. The information is passed on to the control unit. The control unit causes the current state of input 3 to be loaded in a register. If the valve is waiting, a 1 for yes, condition fulfilled. After that, the address counter moves on to the next address. This line is and input 5. The control unit now causes the current state of input 5 to be loaded in another register. A 1 therefore, if the screwdriver cylinder is in the upper position and the condition is thus fulfilled. The contents of the two registers are taken over by the arithmetic unit. In the meantime, the arithmetic unit has been informed by the control unit that an AND operation is to take place. The arithmetic unit therefore combines the two values. As both conditions are fulfilled, the result of the operation is a 1. This result is recorded in the accumulator. The address counter moves to the next address. The next line in the program, set output 7, 
is loaded in the control unit. Since set is a command that has to be carried out, it is passed on direct to the accumulator. If the result of the operation opens up the path there, that means that if, as in our example, there is a 1 there, output 7 is set. The address counter then calls up the next instruction from the program memory. And all this takes only a few millionths of a second. In this screwing and testing machine, each valve passes through a whole series of operations. And each operation is subdivided once again into several phases. In the operational mode automatic, the various actions have to be carried out one after another. These are lower the screwdriver, screw up, raise the screwdriver once again, move the valve on. So the screwdriver must not come into operation until it has been lowered. It must not be moved on until the screwing process has been completed and the screwdriver is in its upper end position. The sequence of the various movements must be laid down in a program, in the so-called sequencing program. So that a sequence can be programmed, it must first of all be carefully subdivided into separate steps. Each action carried out by the machine is a step. In our example, these are step lower, step screw, step lift, step transport, etc. Conditions have to be fulfilled for each step. In our example, the screwdriver cylinder must not be lowered until the valve is in the working position and the cylinder is at the upper end position. Now, a condition of this nature is not always sufficient to define a step unambiguously. An example. If the cylinder is at the upper end position and a valve is ready in the working position, then the screwdriver cylinder should be extended in the step designated lower. However, in the step designated transport, the valve should be moved on. The same condition therefore applies to both steps. The valve in the waiting position, the cylinder in the upper end position and yet two completely different actions should take place. The steps must therefore be locked against one another so that the appropriate condition triggers the correct action at the right time. An installation should generally work automatically, but there are a whole series of other operational modes in which other program functions are required. For example, the operational mode manual. In manual operation, the sequence of the various actions is not specified by the program. The actions are triggered by pressing keys in the sequence and at the time required. In manual operation 2, each action is dependent on conditions. One condition is the keystroke of the operator. Further conditions are monitoring features, the purpose of which is to eliminate faults in operation. For example, if the screwdriver cylinder is lowered, the valve must not be moved on, otherwise the screwdriver might be snapped off. Whereas in the logic operation program, the sequence of actions is specified, for example, by the operator, in the sequencing program, this has to be carried out by the program itself. The first phase of the programming of a sequence is the careful breaking down of the actions into steps. In our case, the steps are lower, screw, lift. To distinguish these steps, three aids are generally employed, i.e. flags, counters, or sequences. Which one is used depends on the programmable logic controller utilized. A flag is a device for programming a programmable logic controller. With a flag, statuses or items of information can be noted and subsequently they can be interrogated. A flag is allocated to each step. 
In our example, they indicate whether the step in question has been processed. Only when, for example, the flag for the step lower has been set, which means that this step has been processed, can the next step, screw, be activated. In this way, a sequencing program can be structured step for step with the help of flags. However, if a counter is used, each step is given a number. Once a step has been processed, the counter moves on to the next position. In the following step, the counter is interrogated as to whether it has the correct number. In our example, the machine may only screw in the valve stem if the counter is at six. The mode of operation of the programmable logic controller is the same when both flags and counters are used. The central control unit processes one program line after another at high speed. By interrogating the flags or the counters, the program recognizes which step is active at that particular moment. In programmable logic controllers with a sequencer, no flags or counters are required to structure the program. With a controller of this type, the sequencer holds the central control unit in the active step until the step has been processed. Only then is the next step activated. A further locking of the steps is therefore not necessary. Now a simple example of a sequence. It consists of a lamp and a push button. If the push button is pressed, the lamp should light up. If the push button is pressed once again, the lamp should go out. As has already been mentioned, the program must first of all be subdivided into steps in order to carry out such a task. Here it would appear that we have two steps, lamp on and lamp off. However, these two steps are not sufficient. Between the switching on and the switching off, the push button must be actuated once again in each case as follows. Press lamp on, release lamp remains on. Press lamp goes off, release lamp remains off. In order to plan a program, this sequence must first of all be represented graphically. As we have already seen, we need four steps. These are lamp on, continue, lamp off, jump. There is also a condition to go with each step. For the first step, the push button must be pressed. For the second step, the push button must be released. For the next step, the push button must be pressed. And finally, for the last one, the push button must be released. Each step, if the condition is fulfilled, must result in an action. In the first one, the lamp goes on. In the next step, the program should proceed to the next step. In the third step, the lamp should go out. And in the last one, the program should jump back to the first step. That means the actions may only be carried out in the various steps if the appropriate conditions are fulfilled. The task. The aim is to program the sequence press the button, lamp goes on, Press the button once again, lamp goes out with the statement list. As has already been mentioned, this sequence is divided up into four steps. These are lamp on, continue, lamp off, jump. With this statement list, the various steps are locked against one another by means of flags. This is the sequencing program for our example in the statement list. The central control unit interrogates all the lines of the entire program at great speed. As flag one is not set, the first step of the program is active. 
If the push button is now pressed, the conditions for the first step are fulfilled, i.e. flag 1 is not set, and input 7 is set. Output 4 is therefore now set, the lamp goes on, and flag 1 is set. This activates the next step, the first condition of which is fulfilled, but not the second, as the push button is still being pressed. Only when this is released are the conditions fulfilled, and flag 2 is set. The next step is activated. The first condition is fulfilled. When the push button is pressed, the other condition is also fulfilled. Output 4 is reset, the lamp goes out, and flag 3 is set. As a result, the next step is activated. Only when the push button is released, that is when there is no signal present at input 7, are the conditions for this step fulfilled. And flag 1, 2, and 3 are reset. This reactivates the first step, and the process can start again from the beginning. The three characteristic features of this sequencing program are all program lines are constantly interrogated regardless of which step is active. Each step is distinguished by a flag. A step can only become active if the previous one has been processed. task. The aim is to program the sequence press the button, lamp goes on, press once again, lamp goes out, using a statement list with a sequencer, for example for the Festo FPC 404. As has already been mentioned, this sequence is divided up into four steps. These are lamp on, continue, lamp off, jump. This is the sequencing program for our example in the statement list with a sequencer. The sequencer begins with the first step. As long as the conditions are not fulfilled, only the program lines for this step are interrogated by the central control unit. The push button is pressed and, as a result, the condition IF INPUT 7 is fulfilled. Output 4 can therefore be set and the lamp goes on. As a result of this, the next step, continue, becomes active. The central control unit remains in this step until the condition is fulfilled. That means until the push button has been released. Once that has taken place, the command NOP is carried out. That means non-operation. The program merely continues to the next step which is then activated. This step two is processed until the condition is fulfilled, i.e. until the push button is pressed. Then output four is reset, the lamp goes out, and the next step is activated. As soon as the push button is released, the condition if not input 7 is fulfilled. And the command can be carried out. The program jumps to the first step and the sequence can begin once again. The characteristic features of this statement list with sequencer are the various steps are distinguished by the command step. Only the program lines of the active step are processed. 
flags or counters are not required here. The task. The aim is to program the sequence, press the button, lamp goes on, press the button once again, lamp goes out with the ladder diagram. This sequence is divided into four steps. These are lamp on, continue, lamp off, jump. In this ladder diagram, the various steps are interlocked with one another by means of flags. This is what the ladder diagram looks like. Each step has a step flag. In this case, flag one to flag four. When the program is started, each position is processed by the central control unit at great speed. But let's have a closer look at our example. The first step in the program is interrogated. The push button has not been pressed yet. An interrogation is made. Is there a signal present from input 7? Since the push button has not been pressed, no. So the condition has not been fulfilled. Regardless of whether the following conditions are fulfilled, nothing happens. Now the push button is pressed. A further interrogation is made. Is there a signal present from input 7? Yes. The next position, is there a signal from flag 1? Flag 1 is not set, so the answer is no. The condition is fulfilled. And the same applies to the next position. There is no signal present from flag 4, as that is not set yet either. And now comes the command, set flag 1. The remaining positions in the program are interrogated, but nothing happens as the steps are not active and or the conditions are not fulfilled. The conditions have been fulfilled in the power unit, i.e. flag 1 is set, flag 3 is not. The lamp goes on. The interrogation returns to the first step. Since flag 1 is stored as a result of the latching effect, the conditions are still fulfilled. The step has now been processed. The next step becomes active and is interrogated. Is there no signal present from input 7? However, as the push button is still pressed down, there is a signal present. The condition is not fulfilled. The push button is released. The interrogation continues. In the active second step, the interrogation is, is there no signal from input 7 present? There is none, because the push button has been released. Flag 1 is set. All conditions are therefore fulfilled, and flag 2 is set. As a result of the latching function, the conditions are still fulfilled. Step 3 becomes active, and the interrogation carries on continuously. The push button is pressed. The conditions for this step are therefore fulfilled, and flag 3 is set. In the power unit, the first condition is still fulfilled, since the flag has remained set. But since flag 3 is now set, this condition is no longer fulfilled. Output 4 is reset, the lamp goes out.
As a result of the latching function, flag 3 is now stored in the memory. The step has been processed. The next one becomes active. Because the push button is still pressed down, the conditions for this step are not fulfilled. The push button is released. The conditions for this step are therefore fulfilled and flag 4 is set. This condition is no longer fulfilled since flag 4 has already been set. Therefore flag 1 is reset and as a result flags 2 and 3 as well. As flag 4 has now also been reset, step 1 once again becomes active and the whole process can begin once again. To summarize, in the control section each step is given a flag, each of which is interrogated to find out whether the previous step has been carried out. The position of the flag is stored by means of latching. Then the appropriate outputs are set in the power unit. The task. The aim is to program the sequence, press the button, lamp goes on, press the button once again, lamp goes out in ladder diagram with the help of a counter. This sequence is divided up into four steps. These are lamp on, continue, lamp off, jump. In this ladder diagram, the various steps are locked against one another by means of a counter. And this is what the ladder diagram with a counter looks like. Each step is marked by the position of a counter and locked in this case, positions 1 to 4. When the program has started, each line is processed by the central control unit at great speed. Our example now proceeds as follows. When the counter is in position 1, and that is the case at the beginning of the program, and there is a signal from input 7, and that also applies as the push button is pressed down, then set output 4, the lamp goes on. Also, switch the counter to position 2. This causes the next step to become active. The push button is released. The condition, if no signal is present from input 7, is therefore fulfilled. The command, switch the counter to position 3, is given. Now the next step becomes active. When the push button is pressed, the signal from input 7 is also present and the condition for this step is fulfilled. Therefore, the command reset output 4 can be given. The lamp goes out and switch the counter to position 4. As a result of this, the next step becomes active. If the push button is released once again, that means if there is no signal from input 7, then the following command is given. Switch the counter to position 1. And the whole process can start from the beginning once again. To summarize, in a sequence control with a counter, the counter always moves on to the next position once the condition at the present position has been fulfilled. The central control unit processes the entire program continuously, 
and in each step interrogates the position of the counters. The task, the aim is to program the sequence. Press the button, lamp goes on. Press the button once again, lamp goes out using a function chart. This sequence is divided into four steps. These are lamp on, continue, lamp off, jump. In a controller with a sequencer, each step is given a step module. Flags or counters are not necessary. This is a function chart with the step modules for each step. When the program is started, step one is active. The central control unit of the PLC remains in this step. It merely interrogates input seven. The push button is pressed. The condition signal present at input seven is fulfilled. As a result in step one, which is designated lamp on, the command set output four is given. The lamp is on. As this step has now been processed, the sequencer switches to the next, step two, with the name continue. The push button is still pressed down, therefore the condition no signal present at input seven is not fulfilled. Only when the push button is released is the condition fulfilled. And the command go to step lamp off is given and carried out. Step three is called lamp off. The condition is, is there a signal present at input seven? As the push button is not pressed down, the condition is not fulfilled. The step remains active. The central control unit remains here until the press button is pressed and as a result, the condition is fulfilled. Now the command reset output four is given. The lamp goes out and the sequencer switches on to the next step. Since the condition for the fourth step with the designation jump is not fulfilled because the push button is still pressed down, nothing happens. However, the step remains active. The push button is now released and the condition no signal present at input seven is fulfilled. The command jump to the next step can be carried out. Step one is once again active and the entire program can start from the beginning once again. To summarize, here too only one step is active at a time. The sequencer does not switch the central control unit onto the next step until the step currently being dealt with has been processed.